Ba, ba. Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Vegas J, and with me is the magical unicorn, Robin Oz. What's happening, Robin? <laughs> not much, Jason. Not much. I'm just saying I make this horn look good. Just saying. What is that on the top of your head, young lady? <laughs> <laughs> that is a French imported unicorn horn. Unicorn just horn. Saying. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, let's get uh, let's get right to our first segment, and then, as always, we will introduce our guest, shall we? Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different mug, try and educate you a little bit, and and try and match it with our guest. So, our guest tonight is Mo. How are you? Good. Good. How are you, man? I am good. All right. So I was walking around my house I'm like, what rum can I make uh, to, to uh, match up to Mo? So I just with a little arts and crafts <laughs> tonight, I am drinking Mo rum. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Arts and crafts. I'm drinking Mo rum. <laughs> nice. Nice. Now done, to Jason. be, to be serious, it is Montagna rum and this is rum out of Colorado and it's pretty yummy. Uh, and it's a it's a small batch. Uh, they're not making it mass quantities. They're actually numbering each uh, bottle. Uh, it's really good, normal rum. And tonight, because I had to, plus I got in the mail from uh, Kathy, who's a good friend and a member of the, the thrifting board. She sent me the brand new Disneyland oh. Hitchhiking Ghost Tiki Mug. And I'll nice. be at Disney World on Saturday. So my, Very cool. my Mo Rum is in my Disney Tiki Mug. Well, I don't have Mo Rum, but I do have, ladies and gentlemen, the Den of Sin. Because before we go any further, let's say congratulations to Jay for Ooh, fifth season of Thrifty Business. Balloons, horn, and Den of Sin cup, or glass, excuse me, not a cup. And he has these available, too, so just saying. Hmm. Yep, today is so, yeah. episode one of season five. Been doing this for, uh, we do 25 episodes a season. So this is our 101st episode of Thrifty Business. Plus, I got thrift hauls and selling past your expiration date. So tons of content. If you're new to watching, welcome. Uh, there's a lot to catch up on, a lot of good uh, free content. So after this one's over, go back and watch. All right, Mo, we're going to uh, put you in a little timeout, and we'll see you in about a half hour, buddy. See ya. <laughs> All right, let's get right to it, shall we, Robin? Shall we? Shall we? Scores of the week. Oh, sorry, I took your line, Jason. <laughs> it's time for scores of the week. Robin and I share with you uh, fun, exciting things that we have sold for good prices. They're bolos, be on the lookouts, things you should be hunting for while you're out thrifting. I forget who I had going first. Oh, you. Oh, me. Okay, You're look perfect. at those mighty fine, mighty fine. I mean, I don't even know. There's no name for these. I just put white fashion, pointy toe. And then Jason said, Robin, throw pimp and Halloween. And look, ladies and gentlemen, they sold. And they sold literally 10 days before Halloween, and he got them the night before. So I really want to know what he went as. Like, those are those kind of badass. So uh, two things I want to say. That's why I led with this one. Uh, great freaking picture. You see a lot of angles of the shoe. Um, the only problem is, here's my only thought on this one, Robin, is I oh, think you guys yeah. have too much light because you see the dragons. Right, right. And, so and this we is one of those rare times where I think I would have taken the like an editing program and just – just jazz the coloring or the brightness a little bit just so you could see the dragons a little more because, of course, they look yes. nice on this computer we're all on. But you got to think of people shy because these are great, great pictures. But it's the one yeah. time where I would have jazzed just a little bit. Little yeah, bit. And, and, and to be honest with you, it, it, this was after we had talked about uh, something else that you had said the same thing. And I thought, oh, dang, I could have done that too. But, oh, well, but we sold them. So that's a good thing. So it does really pay attention. I mean, pay attention to your your thing. Put Halloween in. Okay. So these were really exciting because I wanted to show a tip. A really bad first photo, by the way. We, we should have angled it better. But regardless of that, the fact is, if you guys have scrubs that aren't selling I and the same size, 
put them together, lot them up because uh, nurses love getting a deal like that. So I was able to get them for like, um, I think it's two bucks a piece. And then I sold them for 15 plus shipping. So the nurse that got them really loved them because um, Snoopy cool. sells, right? Okay, okay, okay. If anybody knows me, I love coffee, love coffee. And this is my number one favorite coffee in the whole world, Dutch Brothers. Oh, anyway, went to some like 12 midnight thing in Vegas, rolling through the thing, you know, the drive through. And if you bought a large drink, you got this free hat. Well, you know, um, I know I'm a dork uh, because I'm wearing a horn, but I really didn't, I'm never gonna wear a knit hat. So I decided, well, I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna sell it. And so it, it sold. So who buys these are the, hate to say it, the millennials. Anyway, so I sold it for like, you know, I don't know. 25 30 bucks oh no yeah 34 plus the free shipping so it was easy to throw in a poly bag and off it went oh yeah this was fun okay so i actually bought these for my nieces a long time ago and then i went thrifting again in vegas because you know it's my second home right found it for four dollars four dollars this thing and, it, and on top of that it was a bigger size which as Jason and the thrifting board uh, admin will tell you it size sells plus the fact that it's Disney parks. You can't find this anywhere except for Disneyland. And the other thing is the really cool thing is that in one of the pockets, there's an actual cell phone holder. So you can actually thread your headphones through the oh, cool. thing. Yeah. So it was really cool. So we took a best offer on that plus shipping and away it went. To and Ohio, I want to I uh, compliment the uh, photographer. So I'm guessing that's Jimmy. Yes. That's, uh, that's and, uh, Jimmy and, boy. And the lister, that's you, because most people would make this their first shot. And this is fine, but when you angle the important part, this being the Disneyland and the outline of Mickey, towards the camera, it's so much nicer when people are searching. So this is an excellent opening Yay! shot. Hey, you hear that, Jimmy Boy? We got an A+. <laughs> all right, so uh, oh, we all hey. know Tom Petty just passed away, and I had all these books. These, these are uh, music books. You know, you uh, play the piano to Tom Petty songs. Two Tom Petty and two Traveling Wilburys, and Tom Petty was one of the Traveling Wilburys. <clears throat> I had them each listed separately on Amazon for about 15 bucks uh, a pop, and Tom died. I, I put them together the day he died for $100. I had them on sale, and they just sold this. Uh, actually, they just got paid today for $67. So nice. uh, being aware of my surroundings, being aware that Tom passed away, I quickly made it a little lot, and people kept trying to buy single ones out of here. And my th th question to them was, hey, where the hell were you when I had them listed singly? You could have bought them already. No kidding. But good job on the lot, though, because I like buying lots. And and look at my picture, everybody. The first picture does not show every inch of every book. It's just a, a, just a tease. It's just a smattering of each book. So it <laughs> makes it a nice square. All right. Uh, you oh. probably, if you're on the 13 board, you saw this. I sold a San Marcos blanket yesterday. This is wow. a queen size San Marcos with a leopard on it, $114. And the, the key thing about San Marcos is the picture on one side is the opposite of the picture on the other side. And uh, oh, there we go. So that's that's the one side and that's the reverse. So big blanket, $114 plus $20 shipping. I sell a lot of San Marcos blankets. I still have yet to find one, Jason. It's oh, geez, I find them all the time. I have like a magnet. Now, this is a... Uh, uh, aligned uh, trucker jacket uh, that I found not too long ago, I think for 20 bucks, uh, vintage Levi's. And here's the uh, cool lining. There it is. Boom, right there. Uh, it's vintage. It's a little worn in, but I got $167 for it, and I paid $20 for it. Nice. Oh, yeah, this was a good one, too. And then this just sold, because I had my hand, because it just sold, like, while we were going to air. Okay, uh, I'm going to guess maybe no one watching right now knows this band, but this is a band called Bowling for Soup. We might have one or two fans, but it was just a little bar towel you bought at the concert. And I just sold this, this little tiny bar towel <laughs> for $40. Now I know I didn't pay $40 at a concert. This what? was probably $15. And it went internationally. And I, I see that my, uh, my lovely assistant, who I do love, Charge twenty dollars to ship this two ounce towel, so I'm probably going to be refunding <laughs> a couple dollars. But but another tip: ship everywhere. This is going to Slovakia. Someone in Slovakia needs a bowling for soup bar towel. I told you, Jay. They love those bands over there. 
Yep. I, so, uh, and, oh, my uh, my admin Robin, she knows the boiling for soup. That's cool. oh, all right. Job, oh, Robin. and you know, I love, 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 love sharing my CD scores. This is a band I ain't never heard of called the Electric Amish. They're obviously parodying <laughs> the Beatles, but I saw it for three dollars and ninety five cents up at a record store in San Francisco. And as you can see today, I sold it on Amazon for fifty dollars. Now. Are you ever going to find the Electric Amish CD? Probably not. But i just like to show that in 2017, you can still buy CDs at record stores for $4 and flip them for $50. That is so crazy, Jay. That is awesome. Okay, those of you who think Bowling for Soup sings Stacey's Mom, you're wrong. That is Fountains of Wayne. So I see y'all trying to be cool in the chat, but you're in the wrong band. <laughs> you are in the wrong band. All right, you've seen our scores. <laughs> Time for our does of the week. Now, you've seen what we've done well. Now, you're going to see what we didn't do so well. Here we go, Robin. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, it, it doesn't look like a dud, right? Because it's brand new. But the fact is, I paid $3.99 for this. Oh, man. I thought I, I thought I had a good thing going. But, yeah. So, I guess sippy cups for Tervis are not, like, the bomb. But, anyway. So, yeah. So, I took the best offer because it's been sitting there for a while. And uh, shipping too, so thirteen. Now I'm bucks. guessing it was for a baby. Didn't you want to put that in your title at all? Maybe I, you know, I, I when I look at it now, I think like, where is the baby part? Like I skipped on that. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> See, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this shit. Sometimes you're gonna make mistakes. <laughs> okay, so this one was Ed Hardy, and we know that Ed Hardy doesn't really do really well, except for except for except for the really super graphics, and I sell all the time in that baseball hats. But this one had a flaw, and the reason we thought because we do really well, Jimmy and I, on things that are flawed, like distressed and things like that, because it's streetwear. Um, yeah, we it, it was a dud, so we just took it, we just ran with it, and they paid shipping. I got I made my money back, you know, eh, whatever. We thought for sure yeah. it would go because of the two X, but. Oh, all right. My. So here's my here's my duds, and, and 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 let me explain why they're duds. This is the leftover costumes. Halloween has come and gone. Mm -hmm. I still got a lot of good costumes, and and here's why they're duds. I don't think anything on this rack is actually a dud. It all can sell. It all will sell. My problem was I traveled twice in the month of October pre Halloween. Did not teach my assistant well enough to to work on it, to start working on adding them to Craigslist and other local apps for when people need them for the last minute. So, and then she, I taught her how to buy Halloween costumes. She got excited. She bought a lot of things. They're still sitting there. So what I'm going to do to make her whole, because what we, we had a little deal worked out is I'm going to buy her stock off of her. So she's back to even on the ones that didn't sell. And then I'll just put them away until next year. But if you're doing something like this, because although Christmas stuff and Christmas music will sell all year, ain't no one looking for a costume on November 1st. Really, they're not. Unless it's okay. on sale for next year. But some of these things are pajamas, and I will just turn them into a pajama. Let's see, not a Halloween costume. Okay. But I did not work my stock well enough because I know how to do it. I just lost track of time, and it was too late. Well, at least you got a foot up for next year. True. I got a good start. <laughs> All right, now it's time for... <laughs> Close Encounters of the Thrifty Kind, Kind, Kind. If you saw this man in a thrift store, would you run the other way? I would. <laughs> so we, we're, we like to tell you little funny stories of people and things we run into in the thrift store. Sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're uplifting, sometimes they're scary and stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, mine this week is going to be two oh, objects. Uh, Robin, myself, and our good friend Kim, we saw in an antique mall that I love in Racine or Kenosha, Wisconsin. The first item, the first thrifty encounter is this vintage <laughs> full fake leg. This, you know, this is straight out of a Marilyn Manson video. <laughs> this, is, this is beyond creepy. And then one booth further, yep, oh. baby coffin with a partial mannequin in it. So Robin paid her dear respects to the fallen mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. As you can tell me, I'm trying to, like, totally not crack up. 
Totally yeah. not crack up. Things you don't normally see while out antiquing. Woo! <laughs> All right, Robin has no picture, but she does have a great story. Yeah, I totally do. Okay, so I, you know, most of me know, like, I, I, I do have a kind of a big ego at times, and so I was in Savers in Vegas when uh, four aisles over, someone's yelling my name, and I'm thinking like, oh yay, I'm having a Jason moment. I'm, someone recognized the sparkly magical unicorn. And I turn around, and the guy goes, dude, I love your shirt. And I was like, oh, because the shirt was this really badass shirt that uh, my best friend Kim made, and then I put all the sparkly names on our shirts. And it, so it had my name, it had my name on it. And I was like, oh man. So I should have taken a picture of the guy. Cause you, if anybody knows me, I would totally be in that guy's grill just saying like, Hey, so how you doing? What's going on? You know, <laughs> but, that is so funny. <laughs> and, all right. Now it's, now it's time for our thrifty tips of the week. Things you should be doing while you're out thrifting to maximize profits, save money where you can. And then Yay! Robin, you're up to okay. Yay! This is our crew. This is our crew from Ecom. Who are these? Who are these masked men? Well, or women obviously in the, the unicorn is me. The shark is our fun size Brenda Bridget and then Joy is the monkey business and then our sweet bestie Kim is the sweet kitty. So the reason this is a thrifting tip for me is because it was all three of these ladies sell on Amazon and I do not. So it was really interesting to go around the store and see how they uh, sourced and how they sourced and how they look things up and it was just interesting. So my thrifting tip for anybody is if you have friends who are on a different platform, you should really just pay attention and take notes and ask the right questions and be curious because I have learned a lot uh, from just that one trip. And yes, we were a little late getting back, but the fact is I learned a ton. And Bridget, you're right. Pumpkin spice Kit Kats uh, are pretty damn good. Just saying. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, you know, I've said that many a bazillion times. You're out with anyone. Everyone knows something mm -hmm. different than you. And so that's how, look, that's how all my, that's how my thrifting groups got born on Facebook. I did not realize the amount of sharing that people could do. I thought mm -hmm. I knew, I know enough. And then I went thrifting with people who are like, you buy this yarn. I'm like, what? So yeah, definitely mix up your friends when you go out thrifted. All right. So here's my thrifty tip. When you buy a lot of stuff at Amoeba Records in LA, and, and this is not just for me, but this is this will be in general, but for me, this is specific to Amoeba. They give you a calendar for the next year, and every month has a coupon. So I was just oh. in Amoeba last weekend, and oh. I was with my wife and my friends, Beth and Dave, and I had four calendars. That's how much stuff I bought last year. And I had four $5 off coupons. Now, $5 off don't seem like a lot, but hey, when you can save 20 bucks in a day, yeah. problem is one coupon per person per visit. So what you do, start shopping, and then you go ring out and throw your shit in the car. And then you go shop a little bit more, and then you hand your wife a coupon, and she goes and rings out. And then you go shop a little bit more, and then you hope you get another person who's checking you out because at Amoeba, there's like 20 checker outers. But don't just settle on using only one because I was only going to be there one day in October. I used all four. I got my $20 off, and I, that, I saved 20 bucks. So make sure when you have coupons, you use them and maximize them. I can't believe you use coupons, Jason. I'm so proud of you. Hell yeah. <laughs> Speaking of craziness, you have got to be shipping me where Robin and I will teach you what to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping your eBay goods. All right. So oh, mine yeah. is actually a prop. I have a prop. That, Robin, you're going to blow. I'm going to blow your mind. You ready? Yes. You know right, me and toys, so Jay. You know me and toys. We all know our good friend, Teresa Cox. She's an admin in the thrifting board. She helps me out in the Seeker Beach. She has figured out that most of us are overpaying our shipping internationally by a lot of money. And so I've been overpaying for about 18 years. Oh, my God. Okay. So she built this tool. And Wait, here's the deal. If She uh, built it? Yes. So if your package is rigid and less than three quarters of an inch thick, 
and then less than uh, 12 inches or 15 inches long, 12 inches wide, you can send it as a large envelope flat, as long as it's stiff. We have all been sending our stuff, like the CD, as a package. So when I put this CD in this thick envelope, it is now rigid. And the way this little size me up tool works is, Robin, if it fits through there, it's less than three quarters of an inch thick. Get okay? out, Jason. Yes. Now, you can apply that to T-shirts and other things like that. You can still use your poly mailer, but what you're going to need to do is fold it so it stays under the three quarters of an inch. You can't ball it up too much. Right. And you might have to sit there to make it rigid. But as long as it fits through this and it's shorter than the 12 inches, it can go the flat rate. I, and so man. Teresa is selling these. So let me show you the figures so you understand. Yes. If you're sending a package internationally, I think this was to Australia, one ounce is $2.29 for large envelope flat or $13.06 no for a package. No way, Jason. We are, not, we are not sending packages. We are sending flat. So let me show you. This is the graph. CDs, for the most part, are all four ounces. I have been, so to Australia, I have been paying 1306. I should what? be paying 604. I, I've been blowing seven dollars and two cents on every single package. And oh, I see the I'm, chat. My mind is the chat is low. losing their mind. So what uh ah there it is. Sorry, I had these out of order. So yes. all, all of you. While you're, while you're watching, go over to Teresa's uh, store. It is Club Red 97. Look up Size Me Up International First Class Mail Shipping Tool and get one. Because once you save on your first two packages, it will be less, you will save more than the cost of this tool. Duh. Plus, it makes a great Christmas gift for us thrifters. Yes, Just look. Boy. Look, we know not every person in the world is watching the show right now. So if you've got a seller on your Christmas gift, a Christmas list, go get one of these because this is the bomb diggity. I can't even fathom the thousands of dollars I have wasted. In no my kidding. Oh my gosh. And I'm so proud of you, Teresa. You finally did it. She's been talking about this for like ever. And, and, and it doubles as a, a divining rod to find water. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Jason. And, and, uh... and look, you ain't, they ain't, this, this ain't the last time you're going to see this. We'll do a video on the thrift and board, the secret beach, but Teresa just got to me. I want to share with you guys. Holy cow. I don't want to waste no more money. Yeah, me either. Jason, that literally blew my mind. Blew it. Blew it. And then uh, Robin just put the uh, item number in the chat. So you can copy and paste that. So Nice. Good job, Robin. All right, Robin, you go. Okay, me go. Okay, yeah, after that, mine's kind of insignificant at this point. Okay, so as everybody knows, uh, I sell baseball hats, and I love them because they're easy to ship. But the problem is, is that, a lot of people don't like the dad hats. And now, does anybody know what a dad hat is? It's the one that's curved, you know, like like how dads wear them, like how I wear them. These are flat bills, and the, the people like to wear them like this. And so the trick is to make sure that when you package them, that the bill stays completely straight. So I was just showing a quick way of I like to put a poly bag on there. I like to throw a business card in there, and then I like to throw them in. That's it. I don't even put an air pocket in it because it doesn't really need it. That's it. That's all I do. And then it's literally probably mm, maybe anywhere from four to five ounces, depending on how heavy the hat is. But it's cheap to ship and boom. And I could probably go a little smaller on the box. But at the time, you know, eBay was only having the eight by eight. So I kind of use them for everything. And good, good tip. Going back to my shipping tip, good tip in the chat. Uh, we can now adjust our shipping prices and others who don't follow the thrifting board and thrifty business. And why wouldn't you? Uh, they're not going to know they're going <laughs> to no. be thinking as package. So all of a sudden you're bringing your, your CDs, let's say to the table with $4 shipping international. It'll blow people's minds more business for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. There we go. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. All right. Now it's time for. <laughs> Our eBay tips of the week to make your sales better. Kind of like this could have been a combo shipping eBay tip with Teresa's little fun thing. But let's right. uh, let's go with you first, Robin. 
Okay, so this is something I learned at the meetup at the mothership. As you guys know, I'm always down there every month with um, our sweet Debbie Weeder and Bill. Um, and now Mo. Mo is down there all the time too. So um, in the Seller Hub, under Growth, you will see an area called Sourcing Guidance. So if Jay goes to the next one. And so basically this opens it up. And basically this is like a trending, like you're like, what's trending on eBay? What's selling? So I went down to clothes because, you know, I like handbags. So I went down to handbags. <laughs> Excuse me. If, uh, is it? When, oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Mine got in. <laughs> That's like Mine short. got in there somehow. I'm so sorry. My bad. So then you open up uh, handbags and it gives you some more categories. So I went under handbags and purses but they have accessories, they have book bags and all that. You'll see this awesome graphic. It just tells you like the upswing and it tells you like in August people were looking. So like December, obviously from last year, you know, it's going to show and then it's going to lay over. If you go down a little bit, I don't know if you can Jay on this, on this particular one, but it'll actually show you what is trending. Like, is it a cross body? Is it a tote? Is it a, oh, there it is. So like, for example, right now, today, Totes and shoppers are the number one thing that buyers are looking for. The next one is messenger and crossbody. Like, I never knew that. Like, as a thrifter, that's awesome. So I think the eBay tip here would be, before you go out thrifting, make a quick look on your sourcing guidance. Just do a quick, uh, you know, mental note, like, okay, this is what I'm looking for, just because it kind of helps you. And then it kind of helps you with your death piles too, right? Gets you to list them much faster than waiting in a bin or a 10 by 10 storage, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I, I I never ever really advertise myself well enough, so I'm gonna tell everyone watching right now. I'm seeing people loving this tip, Robin. Uh, Teresa said her phone's going off I, like crazy. Said it's a QVC moment. People love that tip. If you have learned something on my show ever, do me a favor and share it on your wall. Tell your friends. Yeah. Come on over here. It's a free show with look at all this co content you've got tonight. If nothing else, just the shipping tool and what Robin just shared. That's a ton of great tips that'll make you and help you make you money. So please do me a favor. Make sure you subscribe down below. Make sure you like the show, but make sure you share it. Just post it on your Facebook or yeah. post it on your Twitter and say, hey, check out this show. There's a lot of great tips on it. Plus, you get rum tips. Where else do you get rum tips? Come on now. <laughs> All right. So here is my – now, Robin, what do you think my tip's going to be here? I have no idea. Like somehow you must have missed out on a tiki or something, my friend. So let me tell you. So I went to bid on something yesterday and this popped up and I thought, oh. hmm, why? And then I remembered the seller. So many, many years ago, uh, we're talking like seven maybe. So I, I bought a shirt that was my size and my side is very special. It's two XLT and it was long sleeve and the measurements fit me perfectly. And I have a hard time fitting my ape arms. And so, <laughs> <And ape arms. laughs> so this person canceled the transaction and I said, uh, hello, why'd you cancel it? And yeah. refunded my money and said, because you're a reseller. Can you imagine the narrow minded thinking of what? an eBay seller? So my tip is those of you, and I know there's some of you in my group, I, we try and we try and get this out of your head, but those little sky is falling you are losing money. Yeah. So I did not want to buy the shirt to resell. And if I did, who gives a shit? What I wanted right. was a shirt because it was a cool plaid and it fit me. So I went over to my wife's ID and I bought the shirt there. She then canceled that order because she saw the same address. And I said to her, do you really want two negatives in a row? And she wow. said, I do not sell to resellers. That is insane. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. So all of you are in the chat going, that's crazy. What a stupid jerk. That's so dumb. But we've all been there at some point. We've all had the chicken little mentality. The sky is falling. And some of you, and yeah. I, I don't know if you're going to admit in the chat, but some of you still have it on some things. My point tonight is don't have it. Right. Will, will someone try and pull fast on you someday in your life? Absolutely. Right. Does it happen to every single one of us in business, whether we own a, a brick and mortar or an eBay seller? Yes. Is it the norm? Not even close. So don't have that attitude. It's crazy. It's crazy that she's still losing out on money because I wanted to buy something again from her. Crazy lady. Oh, that's too bad. It, it is. It absolutely is. Oh my God. I love this picture of 
sweet Stacy. <laughs> and I forget what the sound effect is. It'll be that one. 15 <laughs> outside your comfort zone. Oh, look at that. Someone said they had the chicken little of uh, skies falling. I've had it before and Jason talked me down. I can admit it. So thank you very much for admitting it. It's very Good big job. of you. And look, I was there early in my career too, but I realized real quick that like one far between you shouldn't worry about. It. All right. So look, the only way to get better at this, and, and that's why we're running this segment this week, because we're about to talk to our guest is you can do really well in your niche, but you've got to get outside of it from time to time. And yeah. both of us make money outside of our niches, niches. Yay. Oh, mine, mine is kind of exciting. So this is like my, I love Disney, right? I, I'm not as, you know, well, well versed like Bridget, AKA fun size Brenda. Um, but who knew that pewter was the big thing? So I have like a double whammy, a twofer. So pewter and Disney. And that's the tip right there is like, this is comfort zone, uh, way over there because i would have never done salt and pepper shakers because first of all i'm not that chick i don't do salt and pepper i do the you know 99 cents salt and pepper that's it so i had no idea about these so when i went to an ebay meetup down at the mothership someone i heard someone talking about it and i so i had to ask them i you know you know me i get in their grill and they said oh robin salt and pepper shakers do really well if they're one vintage and two if they're pewter but I got a twofer. I got Disney. So look, I, I mean, I took a best offer, obviously, but still, I only paid a dollar ninety nine for the set, <laughs> and I, I did polish them up a little bit because I know there's the patina. Some people like the patina, but in this case, I just needed to make sure that they were clean because I have a thing about sending dirty stuff to people. So, you know, yeah. And I and I had twelve photos. To be honest with you, Jimmy Boy did really good because I don't know how many photos you can actually take of these two, but he did a pretty good job. He got all the angles upside down, upside around. So, yeah. And, and, and then just make sure you, spectacular you know. Spectacular on the black, I got to tell you. Amazing. Yeah, that's, and that's the tip, right? That's another tip. I right almost there. said the F word. That's how, that's how much I love these photos. I just shot <laughs> myself. I was about to say F and amazing. <laughs> F and amazing. So again, you guys, again, you know, Griff from eBay will tell you the two backgrounds are black and white that really do really well. And so I just, we've just, as a group, we've just stayed with those. So anyway, that's my out of zone. I mean, out of comfort zone because it really blew me out of the water. Ooh, Jay, this is interesting. Fine, and I should have had a better picture. The ship and right side up is I know what steampunk is, and it's funny because some people were calling that leg the steampunk leg. Uh, I, I know what it is to a point, but I really don't. So every once in a while, when I find stuff like this, I'll, I'll grab it, I'll throw it up there. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I it, that is not my scene. We all know my scenes, Tiki. It's surely not my scene, but and I know this could go to somebody who needs it or wants it just for what it is an old Hastings piston ring pressure gauge, but probably going for somebody who's into steampunk to add to something so you know it's never been in my comfort zone but i can spot it and when i spot it for the right, right pace i think it, price i think i paid three or four bucks uh i grabbed it and it took this one took a while to sell i've had other pieces that sold quickly but this one took a while but i still sold it and i was very happy and i'll always keep my eyes peeled for things that i think are that i think are steampunk so it's one of those things yeah. where if, you, if there is a if there is a burgeoning scene like steampunk, Comic Con, anime, you know you don't have to be in right. it. But you should have a, a little bit of a knowledge, and that's what we talk about. That's what we're going to talk to Mo about in about thirty seconds here. But yeah. what I want to tell you is, I am done one in forever. It is time for a thrift haul. I have three tubs of good stuff ready to go, Ooh. and I need <laughs> Sophia, my assistant, to work on it while I'm gone. So although I'm probably too busy to do it tomorrow, I'm doing it tomorrow morning. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. on the West Coast. Our good friend Kim is going to be my color commentator down here in the corner. Uh, but the Love reason me some you, Kim. The reason you want to tune in is that you know my giant backpack. Well, I got yes. something. I got, I got something bigger, bigger than the backpack to share that I picked up at a garage sale. So, ladies and gentlemen, so big. The person who I bought it from had a better vehicle than my pickup truck, and he had to drive it to my house. No, Jason. Oh, my and gosh. I'm so excited. He didn't ask for more money, but I gave him five bucks for the delivery fee. So you got to tune in tomorrow because it's cray-cray what I got at a garage sale. And that's, and that's the key. What I bought at a garage sale is crazy. So big, I couldn't put it in my truck safely. Let me put safely. I have a pickup oh truck. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. Jason, but this I can't is safely. Wait. So tune in tomorrow, 9 a.m. 
and uh, we will uh, talking about all. And I got I got three tubs of good stuff. So tune in, you'll you'll see all kinds of good stuff. Nice. All right, let's get our guest in here, shall we? Yeah. Because no. we're gonna go right from thrifting outside your comfort zone to talking about Mo thrifting outside his comfort zone. <laughs> Hey, everybody. It's our special guest, Mo Fremont. Hey, Mo. Where's Mo? Howdy, howdy, howdy. Hey, Mo. Oh, there he is. Okay. How's you weren't there for a second. I'm like, oh, no, we lost Mo. <laughs> and you know what, Mo? I always tell the guests, and I forgot to tell you, when I bring you back on, just make sure your pants are on. You're not picking your nose. And I forgot. <laughs> so luckily, luckily. My pants are off, but I'm not picking my nose. All right. Well, your pants <laughs> are off. As long as you don't stand up, we are all good. <laughs> So but we're having Mo on tonight for a couple of reasons. Mo, Mo, Mo has a podcast, but Mo really wanted to expand his horizons. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Get outside your comfort zone. Get outside what you know, because it makes you a lot of money when you start to learn. So Mo, why don't you give us your 60-second uh, bio? Who are you? Where are you? Do you got kids? You got pets? Are you married? Blah, 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 blah. A bit of everything. Uh, I guess I'm Mo Freeman on Facebook. Uh, I have a little podcast called reseller niche podcast uh, we have a little facebook group and um basically i am somebody backstory is i used to have a shipping store for years um a retail shipping store similar to ups kind of an independent and then i've been selling on ebay since 2000 or 2001 my current account nice. is 2001 um back then it was uh mainly tickets it wasn't anything really physical concert tickets event tickets Oh, very uh, cool. Fast forward to probably about three years ago, I got back into eBay uh, big time, eBay and Amazon. And um, I kind of, especially in the last year, I've been pushing more eBay, but in the sense that I like interesting, different things. I get bored. Um, I'm not ADHD, I'm ADD, and I'm not hyper. But um, and this, that's what kind of drew me to the thrifting board and the secret beach is that you talk about things that you know about, plus they're different. It's not, I'm gonna pay a pair of the regular plain Jane white t-shirts or whatever it is. Right. It's different. Right. Um, and I like labels, maybe, I don't know if that makes sense, but I like to pick up a box and see an old label, even on a shirt, on a box, on anything. And so I can look it up, if it has a date, even better. If it has a copyright with a company name, even better. Uh, because one of the things I did was at the shipping store was we did a lot of shipping for auction houses. So these guys come in with all kinds of weird stuff. Sure. And I mean, we didn't have time to have a label on it. And you have to look it up to find out insurance rules. So that's why I'd start to change art and, and things like paintings and sculptures and all kinds of stuff. So that kind of got me thinking and they're selling it and I walk in these auction houses sometimes they the item and they on eBay no actually I'm just a shipper but you get asked that enough times so you're like maybe I should be putting something on eBay I mean yeah that's kind of where that's kind of my little backstory right there so nice. you said you said you were selling concert tickets so yes. are, were you like Damone from Fast Times at Ridgemont High not <laughs> I wish I was two for Steely Dan in the front row. <laughs> he said to have Austin tickets. I didn't have that. Uh, I, it was mainly like I remember I was selling Seinfeld tickets. If you can remember that when he start first uh, stopped the show, a lot of local like uh, basketball, football tickets. Um, um, oh, one of the first ones you'll like this. Uh, I went to the. Okay, I'm not too proud to say this. I went to the Spice Girls concert in '97, I think it was, or '98. <laughs> He loves and, you even more now. <laughs> and I couldn't afford the tickets, right? Um, so I'm like, these they're like 20, 30 bucks a piece. But I thought, you know, if I get 10 people to buy tickets, and I'll, I can afford my ticket that way. So um, I sold six tickets and I got four and I convinced three people to go with me. And uh, I still have the concert tea. I should have brought it with me. But, uh, and oh it's my like, God. It looks like 100 bucks. So I mean, uh, so wait, wait, I'm going to pause you. You're. You're like, I'm not too proud to say you went to this place. I mean, come on now. Who are you talking to? There you go. I said that on purpose. No, Jason. I had the posters on the wall. I had the VHS. Oh, my God. I had that right there. 
<laughs> well, let me introduce you to the number one fan of and the uh, president of the Spice Girls group. I was there Jason in 1997. <laughs> now I'm here. See, I wasn't, and, and that 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 bums me out because when I finally decided to go, Ginger had just quit, and she was my favorite. And so, dummy me is like, well, I'm not going if Ginger ain't there. <laughs> oh, jeez. And I should have went. I should have went. I have seen them since, and I've seen them a few times. So I got to admit, yeah. they were good. They were good. I, I, I saw them in the my favorite the band. You don't, got, you don't got to tell me they're good. Huh? <laughs> right, I'm going to send you a picture of those t-shirts. I have two concert uh, tees that I oh bought myself. Oh, my God. Do it. I'll do it, Mo. Pictures. Do it. So, how, so how'd you do on, on, on flipping concert tickets? Pretty good. I mean, it wasn't my, uh, like my daily income. I was, uh, you know, I was working at the time, but um, it afforded me, I was able to do stuff. I was able to buy gas, eat food, I mean, just like basic things. But um, every time I wanted to go to an event, I would buy four tickets, six tickets, eight tickets. I'd pay for my ticket and I'd sell the rest. And nearly every time it worked. I mean, this is pre-StubHub, so that might might have been part of it. But um, it wasn't that hard. And then I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you remember back then, eBay wasn't easy to deal with in terms of taking pictures and all that stuff. So physical products scared me. Um, I didn't know too much about them. So tickets were easy. Um, And another thing I used to do a lot is meet people and give them tickets. And since it was me and my friends, it was always a group of us, which a couple of times I think I scared off people because some of my friends are pretty big. I'm not, but they are. So we'd show up at lunch hour, and there's four of us sitting there at whatever, you know, town square that is. And then, like, all right, I sat there for an hour, and the guy didn't show up. What happened? And then it turns out it was a, it was a lady, and she said, yeah, I saw a group of kids, but uh, I wasn't sure if that was you or not. I didn't want to come up to you. So uh, don't be intimidating <laughs> if you're doing a pickup. Uh, it help. So, yeah, uh, I could always go to pretty much anything I wanted. I, uh, I I have a story of a modern day flip not gone right, and I, and I think Robin and her husband Jim benefited from it. Uh, Maiden had come through. Oh no, maybe your your buddy Chris. I think Robin Maiden had yeah. come. Th- Iron Maiden had come through once on this tour. They're coming back, and I wasn't sure it was gonna be the same tour, the same set list. So I I bought tickets to flip, but I didn't read the fine print where it said you can't flip these because there's no physical tickets. You have to show up with your ID or something. And I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus. And so I thought I. I Mo, I thought I saw the riches because they sell out every t- concert. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, read it. Like, <laughs> I, I, there's no real way to sell these other than me being there. So I was like, all right, my, right. my career as a ticket flipper was over quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm good at a lot of things. I was not good at reading the fine print. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. So, so Robin, when, when'd you meet Mo? Uh, I met Mo at eBay meetups uh, at the mothership. So Mo and I actually have the privilege of, of I think you live down there, right? Mo, you not live- too far. I'm, I'm in Fremont, so not too far. Yeah, then- right. Okay. So I travel the furthest, Sacramento, um, but I go every month. And uh, Mo started coming uh, with Yong. Yeah. And, um, and Steve. Steven, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, uh, Sherry and Alan, who run the meetup for eBay through Griff too, um, we we started. They started this new thing where they're going to allow us to to like mingle for thirty minutes. And so I just started getting in people's grounds. <laughs> I'm sure Mo was like, "Why is this chick talking?" No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, so that's I. So I just had to get. I I just hear them talking, and so then I'm you know nosy Nelly, and I just get in there, and I just need to. Hey, so you sell, and where do you sell, and what do you sell, and. Yeah, and that's how we we kind of met. And then I think we also met. Did we meet anywhere else, Yong? Did we meet? I mean, uh, did we meet Yong through Yong through something I else, or was it just? So. Most, I, I've been. I'm really bad. This year has been the year of actually started networking. So I've been. Yeah. Been in Facebook groups. I've talked a lot, so you might have seen me on Facebook before. Yeah. Like, talking. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, but I would never go to anything. I'd be. Able, I'm one of those guys. Oh, I don't want to go to that. I don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> meet people face to face. What's that? I'm well, super awkward, but you get you're, over that. You're, you're in Jason's groups now, so we'll we'll help you out there. Yeah, so and actually, I didn't know. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let, let's get the, let's let's no yeah let's get that story there. So you're, you're selling you're selling concert tickets and you know that worked out well. And then yeah. when did you decide I should probably do something else? Because you know we were talking right before the show and the problem I think a lot of sellers have is they get into their comfort zone of what they do well. As you can see over the shoulder here is all my CDs that are for sale on Amazon. I still do quite well at them, but for the longest time my eye on the prize was just CDs and I would walk into a record or uh, a thrift store, look at the music section, CDs and records, and then leave. And I'm in, I'm in Vegas. I'm in these huge thrift stores, tens of thousands <laughs> of square feet of thrift stores all throughout Vegas. And I went to like 10 square feet and looked at that section and left. And so although my, my eyes on the prize were right at my niche, I didn't look at anything else. And then I'm like, Oh, one day I'm like, I'm just standing there one day. And I'm like, I remember where I was, and I remember it was about seven, eight years ago. I'm like, oh, I should probably look at something else. And I think you know, that's why you're up tonight because you were like, I gotta, I gotta look at other things. You know, I, I do so well in one thing. So when did you start figuring out you should be keep branching and keep branching and keep looking? It took a while, probably about five, six years ago, um, maybe seven years ago. I was in the same spot you are. It wasn't records though; it was action figures, toys specifically. Because I would go to these toy shows. They have the giant toy shows. People would have booths there. And I would only buy specific, like I, I was telling you earlier, I would be lying at a thrift store, uh, any kind of store, straight to the toy section. I'm like, oh, I didn't find anything. And I go straight to the exit. Which is really <laughs> steep. And then I went to a place called the Time Tunnel, I think it is, it's in San Jose. And it's a consignment store. And I went in there because they have a lot of toys. And they, they're the guys that run the toy show in San Jose, I think. And then I walked by and they didn't have toys that I saw first. It was records and then it had shirts, like t-shirts, like vintage shirts. I'm like, that's kind of cool. And then they had like these little knickknacks, basically lots of different things, because you know, different cases have different things in them. So I'm like, oh, what are you doing with these? And they're like, well, same thing we're doing with everything. We're selling them all. Some of them are on eBay, some of them, you know, we sell. So I said, oh, you can sell those? I'm like, yeah, and then I'm thinking in my head, oh, you used to sell tickets. I mean, you should know this. <laughs> but then I started saying, oh, you know, instead of an action figure, I could, you know, there's T-shirts, there's, there's a lunchbox. That's one of, oh, that's one of the first things, lunchboxes. I started looking at vintage Why? lunchboxes, flasks, because I guess nostalgia, I used to have one when I was a kid, you know, uh, had the Ghostbusters lunchbox with a flask. And then um, I'm like, oh, wow, people like them. That's where the ball start, started rolling from there. I'm like, okay, there's different things. And that store is so cool that it had a million different things in these 20-foot cases. So you could see everything from, you know, vintage Hawaiian shirts even sometimes yeah. to yeah. vintage, like, anything you can think of, not just toys. So that's kind of where it started. And then I started, you know, getting on Facebook a little bit, looking at YouTube channels, like, going to the thrifting board and then seeing, you know what, people are doing more than just action figures. More than just <laughs> like, like, wow, you know, and yeah, and that kind of went from there. You know, I should have had my epiphany sooner because when I started selling music, CDs specifically, and I, and I sold a lot of records and chess because it was early 2000, um, when I when I, I was one of the early early CD sellers, and I went right away from nothing to three to five hundred CDs a month, not dollars, items, to the point where the post office goes, "We can't do all these every day." I go, "Well, what are my options?" I didn't, I mean, like, <laughs> give me, tell me what I can do because they were. I was holding up the line every day. I'd show up with like thirty packages, and back <laughs> then they were just like, "This is annoying," but. <laughs> Well, they, they taught me how to just put my own stamps on. I go, oh, I can just stamp them and th yeah, drop them? Oh, yeah, no problem. So, I you know, I was an early ad adapter to just dropping my crap at the post office. But <clears throat> when it started to wane, and even though I still sell a great amount, I showed a $50 CD today, I, I still didn't have that epiphany. I didn't go, like, what else should I sell? I just kept going, man. I was just b barreling ahead. And then I'm like, oh. So then I learned everything. And not everything. I'm still learning stuff. But. I sat down and learned jeans and I learned sports coats and I learned bras and I learned dresses and I learned purses. You know, I'm like, you know, can you imagine this in the bra section? It still freaks women out every day. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, Jason, it freaks me out. <laughs> 
Actually, I so, have sold, so I sold a bra on eBay. Go ahead, oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, Did you really? It was, yeah, it's it was this big. It was a doll it, bra. It sold for twenty bucks. Though, so I, I should have. Okay, <laughs> does there's that a, count? I've never sold a doll bra. A doll bra. Here, you, you you beat me. I, I I've never sold a doll bra. Oh, I didn't my even know there was a. a <laughs> I didn't oh, realize yeah. there was a call for it. It's the right. whole thing, doll clothing. Right, yeah, that's another niche I got into. <laughs> another niche. Oh, my gosh. See, this is why I love the thrifting board. I, this is why I absolutely love every single member in the thrifting board. Because just like you, Mo, everybody's got their thing that they started with. And so then I come along, and I am, what is that, Jason, that we say? Uh, I am a... Uh, I know all master of none. Like I, I just, I cannot Jack, find a niche Jack that I love trades, master of none. Yep. Because, and you know, because I don't want to, because there's so much, look, I don't even know about doll clothes and now I'm going to have to find out about doll clothes. Like what? a bra. You sold a bra. A now, doll now, since I brought it up, uh, Tim, I'm going to call you out in the chat here a little bit, Tim. Tim's like, I'm out. I'm selling bras. Sorry, folks. Look, there's money to be made. The goal, our all our goals is to pay our bills. Absolutely. And to have fun in life. And so to, to make enough money that you don't just pay the bills, that you have an enjoyable life. Now, Mo's got some kids. Robin okay. likes to travel. I yep. like to travel. Yep. So, you know, our money goes to different things. But bras is something that a female friend taught me. And I've taught many others. And every time I teach a class, I make every man in the class buy a bra oh, because good. there's money to be made. Because look, nowadays too, I, I could be buying the bras for myself. People are very open and free with who they are and how they are nowadays. And I think that's a really good thing. And so a lot of times women just think, ah, he's buying the bra for himself. I'm not. <laughs> I don't I don't fancy wearing a bra. Although you've all seen me in dresses many times, I don't need the matching undergarments. <laughs> but but it is a way to learn something new. And, and and Robin's like, I don't know salt and pepper shakers, but boom, I'm into it. I don't really know steampunk, but when I see it, I can I can I can recognize it and I can sell it and make money because I don't sell a ton of CDs every day now, and I gotta supplement what I know. So Mo, what's what's the weirdest thing that you know you've you've like, all right, I gotta get outside my comfort zone. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing that you have now picked up and or sold? Weirdest thing. Okay, so it's not doll clothing, so I'll eliminate that. Um, oh well, that's pretty weird. So let's let's say no. Um, doll doll bras, you win. But let's see. Oh, <laughs> all right, let's see here. Um, let's see here. All right, this. Um, I'm trying to think here. What's the strangest thing? Um, okay. Um, I've sold a lot of different types of action figures, and there was. Okay. It was a lot that I bought. It was, a, it was um, basically like a guy that was clearing out his entire storage locker. And in there, there was basically, how do we put this? Um, an adult action figure, shall we say? <laughs> I knew it. Um, was it and uh, I didn't know what it was. was I didn't it, know how to take it. Was it male or female? It was male. So uh, was it a Tom of Finland doll? Oh, no. Uh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> I think of name. I can't remember because it was sealed. Um, I can't remember the name. It was. Oh no! And Jason <laughs> is going to show you again, Mo. Get out! Get out! Oh. Do me now. <laughs> no, no! You're going to be like his new best friend, Spice Girls. Now adult toys. <laughs> it wasn't that. I will not. I, I will not show anything graphic. But this is Tom of Finland. It was basically that same size. It was. Um, it wasn't. It, was, it didn't look like cartoony. It basically looked like a regular action figure. Oh but yeah, it's anatomically correct. Oh um, yeah, it's probably so, that. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay. And then the thing went for like 350 bucks. I'm like, what? okay, you know. And, and let me tell you, Mo, I didn't know you were going there. Yeah. And and what I just showed, I have for sale. And it, here we are back to what we're talking about, like. Yeah. I am not a gay man, although I have tendencies. <laughs> but, but, uh, and I, but seeing a naked gay man, either in person or drawn, does not bother me. I'm, I'm cool in, in my sexuality. But I know Tom of Finland stuff sells, and I picked it up when I was with Nadine Thrifton in, um, in Philadelphia. And I didn't really know Tom of Finland. I saw these these books, and I looked up the prices real quick. Oh no, I'm sorry. These were actually bought in L.A. And I started to learn Tom of Finland stuff, and so. 
that is that is hugely popular in the gay male uh, population. And again, I'm not a gay man, but I learned it. And you know, you 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 got a little taste of it by not expecting to find that. It was and, a shock uh, to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to me, if it's legal to own and sell, I'm cool with, with making some money. Right. And again, you know, again, Jason and all of his lifeguards, you know, shout out to them. Look, their thrifting board is just that. Look, I know people get a little and get their panties upset. I mean, like their panties in a bunch and upset. But honestly, if it makes a buck and it's legal to sell on eBay, then do it. I mean, I know people who sell plants on eBay. And I have that is a person that I would love to get on Jay's show because that is a, a niche that I have nothing and know nothing of. And there's very specific agricultural laws for that too. So I'm I'm down. I'm with you boys. If I find something in a locker that is atomically correct, of uh, one I might actually keep it. <laughs> um, but, I'm gonna, I, uh, uh -oh. but i might but to make money on it like mo 300 dollars. that's like that's awesome and it was in a box of what like, cost sweaters two oh, yellow sweaters and in between it was shoved in there you see so some, just, like someone that. hid their doll oh my god this is crazy <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because you know what? Just right, like so the horn that I'm wearing, everybody has a niche. I mean, yes. seriously. Sorry, Jay. So uh, be before we show your scores, scores, Mo, a couple of the people in chat want to know if you're, if you're broadcasting from a nursery school. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this used to be the play. <laughs> yeah. Great topic. And I got that in the background. But uh, no, this used to be our playroom. And then that's kind of like the mini pre eBay room for me. So I usually take pictures here and then uh, nice. go straight to uh, storage. See, they, we, we all have rooms like that. Jay's bathrooms, the photography studio. Um, yeah, you know, Moe's playroom is now Moe's <laughs> picture room. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's, uh, let, let's look at your scores because I have a very specific question about Ooh, one yeah. of them. I'm very excited to ask this question. So yes. let's, Ooh, let's start yeah. with this razor. Very oh, cool. that was that was really cool. That was only a couple weeks back, actually, and that was totally by accident. It was um, I went to an estate sale. I don't go to enough of them, and I went there really early in the morning. And I was with my daughter; she's five. But I had about half an hour before I had to drop her to school. And okay. then walked in there, and it's it, they're not letting you in there. They're letting five people in at a time. So I, I got in there, I had like 15 minutes. So I went through the place real fast. And then they had these boxes in the display case at the front. So I said, okay, um, I don't have time. How much for that box? And he said, Ooh. he said like 160 bucks. I'm like, okay, that's a little bit out. So I waited five minutes and I said, um, well, how about if I take like half the box? And he said, uh, well, we'll cut down the price of the box. So I got him down to 50 bucks. Long story nice. And inside that box, which I, I couldn't even see that right there first was a bunch of pins i think the guy used to be ex-military and an ex-security uh, guard and okay. all the stuff was from the 70s and like wells fargo pins and stuff like that Ooh. one of the things was this chick razor and i'm like what is this it looks kind of gold i was looking at it after the fact and then I'm like okay and i looked it up on worth point actually so um and that really really helped out actually because i had no idea i've never sold a razor to be honest I thought I, I couldn't sell a razor at first i'm like you know is that allowed you know is that like a weapon or something i mean <laughs> do, I, do i have to make sure it's dull or something i don't know and then so then i looked it up and then somebody sold it for i think the last one sold was a, a little bit over 100 bucks so my school of thought whenever i don't know anything and it, whenever something doesn't have many listings is to double the last price maybe it's nice. crazy i don't know at least for the first week so that's what i did and it went yeah Within a day or within maybe two days. Oh, wow. Like, oh, wow. It's like my biggest score in the last couple of weeks. So I'm like, wow, that's nice. pretty cool. Good job. So all totally bad. All right. So here's my question. Oh, and, and great job. Sorry. I mean, I just, how in the world did you get the Chinese characters in the title? And is it searchable? Yes. Um, searchable. That took a while. And that was picked up at a Goodwill bin, by the way. Um, what? So, yeah. And they were all the way in the back. Everyone's going through the giant tubs and they have these shelves in the back. I always go for the furthest place in the room. Go to the back where nobody's looking. And they had four of these things. 
And I had no idea what they are. Crazy. And then the first thing I did was like, okay, I need something to put this in because it was pretty heavy. It was like eight, 10 pounds or something like that. So I found a tub. I filled it with ties and those four things. And I took it to the front. They weighed it. The whole tub was eight bucks. (laughs) I'm like, okay. Okay. That's crazy. Um, So as far as your question is looking it up, um, I didn't look it up. I didn't have that originally. Somebody emailed me and said, Whatever I had listed, I think I forget what I wrote, but it was wrong. And they said, no, this is Shoki or something like that. Yeah, you got it. Here's an, a link. They gave me a link. I'm like, oh, okay, thank you. I mean, and they said, good luck. So I'm like, that's All right. awesome. And then, yeah, that's the coolest thing ever. That was his entire email i hope this helps you um oh i love like, those kind of emails mo i get those sometimes too i mean because i don't speak chinese my wife does but i didn't ask her in this time yeah but, so right. i mean plus she wouldn't have known just by looking at this how would you know if you didn't know right. that specific thing because there's no there's very little writing on it so yeah um he told me and i looked it up and i matched it up the best that i could and then it went so i got lucky nice and i see he's missing a thumb and you still got 200 dollars for him Oh, and he's missing his rod, too. He's missing more than a thumb. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of damage on that thing. So let me just tell you about this, Mo. I actually kind of know about these a little bit because we kind of have something like that in Japan, too. These are highly, highly collectible. So everybody in the thrifting board, look for these in garage sales. A lot of people put them in their gardens, like ding-dongs, like they're gnomes. But um, you can put them seriously for, like... My first pictures were taken in the garden because that's what I thought. (laughs) 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 <laughs> but yeah, they're highly collectible and, and each one represents a different action. So okay. um, I love it. Good job, Mo. This is awesome. And good uh, money. Too. Yeah. I, uh, oh! I've never seen this mug, Mo. What? Neither no. have I. Neither have I. Um, Get out. Jason T. Smith, you've never seen this mug. And Mo didn't sell directly to me. What kind of bullshit is that, Mo? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But to be honest, I didn't know. know. Oh, yeah, this was at a Goodwill. It was like two bucks. Um, And I didn't know what it was at first. Um, But on the bottom, that's where everything's written. So I kind of go by what's written. And then you search and search and search and search. And then there was a sold. But um, I'll be honest, it didn't go for that price. It was the best offer. So it wasn't that amount. So I don't want to lie to you. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's over I mean, 25. I would have given you a 27, Mo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it went, let me see if I can remember the exact, I think it went for about 35 to 40, nice. including shipping. Um, but, I mean, like I said, I always over, and then people will make the difference up. But, yeah. No. Um, it, That's awesome. I, was surprised. I love this little guy. I, he would be great to hold all my straws on my bar. He's so cute. Hey, so Mo, yeah, let me so, give you a quick quick tip. Anytime yeah. you have anything tiki, make yeah. sure you talk to the big kahuna first. No. I should have. I should have. <laughs> but you I didn't know him then. You didn't know him then. My bad. I will next time. Because I, 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 I never even seen this mug till today. Yeah. And, it, you know, it really isn't a tiki, but it is It is an old, uh, wait, an wait, old so sailor with a peg then. leg. I'm like, with a peg leg? That's what's awesome. I'm like, whoa. Uh, my bad. And then, I, I and then your final score... Your final score takes me back to my teenage years with my thief named Sheba, who was stealthy. Oh, nice. <laughs> I, played, I played. Oh, this one right here. This one. Uh, wow. Um, let's see. Here. That one was at a, I'm trying to think. That was a local thrift store I found that it. And wow. then for some reason, this thrift store, I always go to the hidden places. They have a counter but they put their cash register on the top left corner of the counter. And for some reason, every th- I've looked under there twice and twice I've found things that are good. And that's where it was. The time before I found like a sealed Game Boy game. I've never found one of those ever. Wow. But you know, if you're not looking, so I always look in the corners, crevices, the top shelf, even though I'm not that tall, um, <laughs> behind, if something's fallen behind on the ground, I look at the shirts on the ground. That's kind of who I'm the scavenger. So that's where that's going. <laughs> uh, um, and I've heard of Dungeons and Dragons, but I'm not a big gamer, even though I do sell a lot of video games. But yeah, it was sealed. So I said, hey, why not? Well, there you go. $116. Wow. That is crazy. Get but like, 
Like all of us, Robin, Mo had some duds in his day, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Many, many, Whoa, many. 99 cents, one bid. What happened here, Mo? What? <laughs> that, one right, that one right there. Okay. This one I bought, I want to say a year ago, a little bit over a year ago. And uh, what I done, Before I bought this, I had bought a big score of an Inesco figurines. Oh. They're like rabbits and all this. They right. were I was killing it with those. They were selling, 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 selling. And then I went the next day. I'm like, oh, these, there's like, these are like in a bag for like 50 cents. I'm like, all right, this is cool. I get the whole thing. I could not sell these for the life of me until very recently. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> what is this? And then I think I lost money, including the shipping on this. Oh. I just said, All right, please be gone. I mean, <laughs> I just had to get rid of it. Hey, we, we get something you're like, oh my God, why did I buy this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally. Plenty of those. Totally. And another 99 cents. Whoops. Oh, interesting. All right. so, this, so this one right here was at another Goodwill bin. I think it was in Santa Cruz. And um, I was kind of annoyed because I didn't find anything there. I was there. I was picking, picking, picking. I didn't find anything at all there. So I just grabbed this. I thought it was complete, but it's actually not complete. So it's missing something. I think it was missing a lid or a cassette uh, or something. So um, I emailed the person afterwards to confirm because I've sold this once before and they said it's not complete. It was missing the lid or something. And then so I had to yeah, email yeah. them again to make sure that they're okay. So um, that this one, I mean, I don't know. I took a shot in the dark. It didn't work out. I got rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, basically. And, hey, look, that's, that's all you can do sometimes. I don't care how long you've been in this game if you are – if you don't have mistakes and you aren't trying, you aren't expanding your horizons. You are not right. reaching be, be outside your norm and your comfort zone. And that's what we talked about tonight. We, I have always talked about it and there is no better example that the Mo Mo has tried a variety of things. And Oh, but before I, before I get my closing remarks, tell us about your podcast, Mo. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. We, as myself and Rusty, uh, the rowing pickers, um, we just kind of talk about the original name of the podcast was supposed to be Two Guys Talking. That was it. <laughs> that was the original name. And we just wanted something where we could just talk about our day-to-day -day things. We were in a mastermind group. We talked. So we said, hey, this might be good for a podcast. So that yeah. was kind of it. There's no real uh, driving back. We just want, want to talk about different things and learn different things. And that's really it, really. We put out a show once or twice a month, and hopefully, if we learn something, and everybody else learns something, then hey, that's that's, that's awesome. Good. Yeah, and that's you know that is the name of the game: learning new stuff. Because I sell the hell out of CDs and tiki mugs, but that doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> what pays the bills is learning new things and hanging out with people who have other interests, and that's why right. it's, it's fun to go uh, to events and go thrifting with your friends, and you know. And and I do this next time you're out with friends and you're and you're all kind of thrifting something else, do what you would expect me to do. Speak up. Hey, uh, you want to buy this service tumbler because of that? It, it is not really competition because especially as thrifters, the the uh, the chance of finding all the same things over and over, slim could happen. But if you start to open up and share and then others around you normally, normally do the same thing. And if you're hanging out with people that don't like to share, find new friends. Okay. Absolutely. That's all I got to say about that. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, shit, we're at an hour and eight minutes. That was a, that was a quick hour and eight minutes. There's so much good fun content tonight. Have a great co-host, have a great guest, Mo and Robin. Thank you guys for uh, doing this with me. I love, love doing the show. And, you know, the, the main thing I want to make sure everyone takes away is get outside your comfort zone, keep your eye on the prize, and live for the moments that really shine in your life. Because the duds will happen, but when you sell a $200 razor, that's the moment you live for. Right. And Jay, before we end, I just want to speak for all of us in the thrifting board in the Secret Beach. We want to say thank you, Jay, for doing this show. It's the fifth season. I mean, it's awesome. I'm glad to be a host. And Mo, thank you for coming and celebrating on Jay's show. So thank cheers, you. Jason. Here's to many more shows. Here's to thrifting outside your comfort zone. And uh, make sure you guys check out uh, 
where Jason's going to be because he's got a lot of stuff coming up. So we're going to, um, I guess that's it, right? Yep. Jay? Oh, and oh, and, and his mugs are available. He's got Secret Beach yeah, and I, NFC. I've got to get the links up. But uh, real quick for, for shows, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Uh, West Coast, noon uh, East Coast for the next Thrift Hall. If you're in the Secret Beach, it is part two of Blair Reynolds. You know that lightning struck and knocked out Blair's uh internet so we lost him right in the middle of the story and next week no shows as where does anyone go who doesn't like children yes i'll be at disney world next week <laughs> <laughs> so, no shows next week i know i know a lot of you're missing mom and i show it just has not worked out but as soon as i get back we'll be back on a normal schedule and uh obviously i'll have the link so thank you guests thank you audience thank you everyone for tuning in those of you watch after the fact thank you too love you guys all and I'll see you in a few short hours for the thrift hall. Good night, everybody. Bye.